Hello, my name is Kylie Fawcett. I'm a student at Bridgeport Regional Aquaculture Science and Technology Education Center. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the IR500 by Buck Scientific to analyze octal alcohol. So first step is to turn on the instrument. So this instrument needs about 45 minutes to an hour to warm up. And so you simply flip the switch on the very back. So after that 45 minute to hour waiting time, it's important to make sure the instrument's ready. If you look at the screen, the wave number should be about 4,000, and you should record the initial percent T. Um, after that, the instrument is ready to use. After the instrument is configured, the next step is to set up the computer. The first step is to open Library Finder. This will ensure you can save all the files you run through the, the instrument. Next, you want to open up M500. This will let you run the instrument. After this is done, it will look something like this and this will ensure that you are ready to run the instrument. The next step is to run a baseline. To do this, we have a single reflection prism liquid cell PLC11M. On here, you want to make sure it's a clean surface since we're running a baseline of the plain crystal. Um, we're doing this because we modified it slightly since we have a non-volatile um, solution that we're testing. Next, you want to bring the carrier over to the instrument. Take the whole thing and just slide it in. After you slide it in, it's important to check the percent T. You want it to be at the percent T of the lambda max for the solution you're testing. Um, if it's not at this, you can use a little screw right here and screw it and it'll help change it. On the computer, you then go to collect, scan sample, from 4,000 recyclable centimeters to 600 recyclable centimeters, and remember this file name. I'm not going to run it since we already have a baseline in the computer, but that's just how you do it. After that, you hit OK, and the instrument will run. So after you run a baseline, you can begin to run the sample. Um, in this case, we're running octal alcohol, which is a non-volatile um, solution. Because of this, we can put it right onto the crystal, and it will not evaporate. In case you have a liquid that will evaporate, they sell a special setup that will keep the liquid on the crystal so you can run it. In case you want to run a solid, um, the best way is to dissolve it into a volatile um, liquid such as alcohol, put it on, let the alcohol evaporate off, and there will be a thin film of the sample you want to scan. So as I said, we're just going to put the octa alcohol right on. It's important to make sure you cover the line that's in the middle of the crystal because this is going to show you'll get a full scan. So after the solution is on the crystal, you can take it, go right back over to the instrument, and once again slide it in. When the carrier is in place, you can go to collect, scan sample, the 4000 to 600 again, and hit OK. So during this time, the instrument will begin to scan the sample. Um, it'll take between two to three minutes, and the line will slowly go through. So you simply just have to wait. After the scan is complete, you can proceed to start processing the scan. First, you want to go to arithmetic, transmission. Um, you want to click whatever was the baseline uh, file. For us, it was 500. Click OK. So after you apply the baseline, you can go to arithmetic again. And this time you're going to zap. A zap region and hit OK. So what we're getting rid of is the CO2 peak, which happens somewhere between 2,500 and 2,000 particular centimeters. So that's that little peak right there. Um, you want to get as close to eliminating only that as possible. When you're done, you can close OK and say you want to replace it. So it's okay that it looks like just the line. Um, next you're gonna go to arithmetic, smooth, Savisky Goulet, okay. Make sure instead of five points it says 50, and you can hit okay. And again, you wanna replace it. Um, so after this, it's gonna look like what you want it to, a very nice smooth line. So you can go to File and Print. At the end of the experiment, you should end up with a piece of paper with a date on it that looks like this. 
the IR is measuring the bending and the stretching of the bonds in the chemical you're testing. In this case, we have the O to H bond, which is right here, happening at 3,337 uh, 3, reciprocal centimeters. Then we have the C to H stretch happening at 2,935.7 reciprocal centimeters. And finally, the C to O, which is at 1,053.3 um, reciprocal centimeters. So this just shows you the bonds that are going on in the sample. This is important because if you do not know the sample, you can compare where these peaks are happening um, against known samples, which will give you an idea of what it is. Thank you everyone for watching. This was analyzing octa alcohol on the IR500 by Buck Scientific.